Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your boy Crooks the Great back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 4 video. And in today's video, we're gonna be using Israel Adesanya against a very well-known clinch spammer here in the middleweight division. And he's using still the best, uh, arguably the best meta pick in Robert Whitaker. Now it's very debatable, obviously, because Alex Pajeda is is pretty damn good in this game. And he might honestly be the new meta pick. But anyways, uh, I wanted to post this video because I get this question a lot. Hey Crooks. How do you beat clinch spammers? Hey, Crooks, how do you go about uh, approaching fights with guys like that? So here in this video, we're going to, and during this fight, I'm going to be giving you guys tips on what I do to stay patient against, specifically against clinch spammers. So you guys see the first thing that I'm doing, I'm just staying patient. I'm not trying to rush forward. Obviously, I'm Israel Adesanya, so I can't just be walking him down with pressure and trying to box with him inside the pocket. So I have to stay patient. He's going to clinch us up right here. Now, I know what he's going to try to do. He's going to try to get, take our back. He tries to backpack us right there. We deny it. And I know he's going to go for a clinch, so I try to uh, I try to lunge out of the way. But you see, I'm just staying patient. And that's the key to winning against a lot of spamming is you have to stay patient and not get rushed. A majority of the time, uh, a lot of these guys are just trying to do it to make you feel uncomfortable, to get you to make a mistake. And then as you get more frustrated and as you... As you increase your output, the more they start to spam. So you just want to be careful with how much energy you exert, especially in a five rounder like this. So you guys see he's not really doing anything. He's throwing a lot of jab straights right there. We're chopping at his legs uh, just to try to lower that block down. You see the double jab into a straight off the major lunge right there. We duck underneath the straight. But you see I'm just mixing up my, com my timing on when I'm engaging with him. And even if he's clinching us, we're able to circle back, and then we're immediately moving laterally. You see how I'm not just moving back and forth? I'm moving very lateral once I do get backed up to the cage, and I'm looking for another clinch attempt so that way maybe I can minor step it. There, we hit him with a good body kick. We miss on the straight. He's able to clinch us, but we punch our way out of the clinch right there. We feint the leg kick. He responds with a good leg kick of his own. He's going to miss right there. We're out of range to make him pay, but that's okay. Going down to the body, try to go back up to the head. He clinched us up. There's another clinch. Now we're up against the cage. We're trying not to let, just giving him different looks. Just trying not to let him get our back for free. He's going to go for the back sitting takedown here, but we're on the denial. We're going to be able to deny it, but our stamina is drained, so we immediately get out of the pocket right there. And we circle back to the middle of the octagon. Now that's what you want to do. You want to try to stay in the middle of the octagon as much as possible. Because usually clinch spammers are doing that just to try to get you up against the cage. And they try to bait you, which is what he's trying to do right here. They try to bait you to come close to the cage so that way they can clinch you and immediately circle back around. So we're trying to keep our back off the cage. And so far, we're winning. We're winning this round. Even though it's a very, very low output round for us, we're winning. Because he hasn't done anything damaging to us, really. There we hit him with a good rock breaking combination that ends in a head kick. Nice front kick right there by him, which is the only nice thing he's done all round. That's going to be the end of the first round. Now we did a very, very good job of staying patient in that round, getting our damage, and then getting out of the way. We were hardly ever in front of him for too long to where he could really clinch us up. Uh, and we got that first round. So key to this fight is going to be staying patient and surviving the later rounds because i know at the later rounds he's going to start spamming galore especially if he feels like he's down so we're just trying not to take too much damage just mixing it up high low fainting to the body so that way he doesn't catch us with an uppercut and get a free rock using a nice long range of adesanya we miss on the teep kick he misses on the on the kick to the leg just trying to trying to move in and out and not give him many opportunities to clinch us. Still chopping at that lead leg, trying to get him to switch into southpaw. He misses on the spinning elbow, but he does get a clinch, but we're okay because we're in the middle of the octagon. We immediately start to try to move laterally to get out of the way right there. Circling off, he's able to get us in a clinch. Now this isn't where we want to be at, but it's okay. We don't want to let him hit knees to the body if we can. He's going for the back seating transition. We deny it. Go with the beautiful ducking uppercut as he tried to clinch us again. And I can tell already he's getting frustrated because he's whipping out the spinning elbows, which is okay. We want to frustrate him. 
Because if we can frustrate him, then we can maybe potentially get a finish here. But that's not what we're looking for. We're just looking to get this decision here with Adesanya if we can. And there he's able to clinch us up. Circles us off like I said they tried to do earlier. This is their game plan. is to bait you in and then clinch you, circle you around. And he's finally able to get the backpack position, but we throw him ourselves back on the ground. Now, I know he's going to go for the punch and then go for the rear naked choke, so we deny that thing right there. If you guys do fight Manny Longlegs here on PlayStation, that's what he loves to do. He tries to get you down, go for the punch, then go for the rear naked like he did again right there. Now, he's just playing it patient, trying not to... Try not to let him get a stamina advantage on us. He goes for an armbar right there, which is a really big mistake. Just because going for an armbar and getting too deep uh, in that position actually loses. He's going to lose the backpack position. And he knows that, so he denied it. Just trying to go for it for points. Go right there. for. He's able to take our back right here, but we're in a pretty good spot. We're not letting him get the, uh, get the back flat position. And we're safe here. We're winning this round. We're denying the submissions as well as the back flat position. We're able to get half guard right there. Punching again that GA. He tries to go for side control, but we deny that thing. Full GA. We're going to be able to hit the backside transition right there. Now we're just staying patient. Not going to rush anything. He decides to get up, which is okay with us. Going to knee into that leg a little bit just to get that leg held down as well. That starts to drain a good amount of uh, a good amount of leg health if he just continues to stand there. So he moves, gets off the cage, and we're back to the feet. And notice how I immediately go back to the center of the octagon. You need to try to stay here as much as possible. There's a spinning elbow attempt. We try to go with a knee. We miss, but that's the end of the second round. Very, very clean and solid second round from us there. Very easy. Very, very easy work as long as we're staying patient. Now, this round is crucial. We need to win this third round. If you can get the first three rounds, if we can get the first three rounds in this fight and make him feel the pressure, we might be able to get a finish in the latter rounds. Terry so clinches us up, goes with the knees to the body. We duck underneath, hit him with a good uppercut again. We're going to clinch him up, push him up against the cage, take his back, see if we can get the back. But we're not able to right there. It goes for a clinch and we circle immediately back off and continue to chop at those legs. Break the clinch right there. Catch him with a clean three-piece, but we don't get a rock, unfortunately. So he's pushing us back. He's able to get us back up to the clinch or back up to the cage right there. Trying to knee our legs. Going for the back seating transition and he's able to hit it right there. Now, same thing. We need to stay patient here. There's the two punches to the body. We deny that rear naked choke attempt right there. Even though I'm pretty sure if he is able to successfully get one, that we'll be able to get out of it because our stamina is very, very high. We're able to get to backside right there. He's going for back sitting. He's able to get it again. Going for the rear naked choke, but we deny that thing right there. And this is how low of an IQ players like this have. I'm literally giving up top mount, but he doesn't want it only because he wants to go for that broken rear naked choke. <laughs> Which is absolutely ridiculous. So we're able to get full guard. We try to fake. He denied it. So now we're in. He's in our half guard. But we're still okay right here. We're able to get him back to full guard. We're going to fake. Punch him a couple times. Hit the transition for the get up right there. And we're back to the feet where we want to be at. Just taking our time. Looking for that spinning elbow because I know it's going to come out right there. Cracking with a good two-piece. Hits us with a nice body kick. Just taking our time. Double jab. Knocks him out of the kick animation right there. He tries to clinch us up again, but we're out of range. Hit him with a clean two-piece. Duck underneath the, up, uh, the spinning elbow right there. Hit him with a good uppercut. Just really taking our time. We've got to get off that cage, though. And we do so successfully, but he was able to clinch us before we could re recircle off. Takes our back again. Goes for the backpack. He's able to get it. We immediately throw ourselves back. He's hitting the body. Goes for the rear naked choke. And we weren't able to defend it this time. But we're in a very good spot with the stamina. It's not going to be too, too hard to get out. But he has this weird ass way 
of going for submissions like here our our bar is going up but his bar is going up as well but we're gonna be able to get out of this pretty comfortably right here I'm not gonna lie we're able to get into his side control off the denial right there elbow him to the head block that transition right there elbow him again we're gonna try to posture up and rain down some heavy ground and pound damage before this round ends and we're gonna hit that block a couple times and that's the end of the third round now i feel like i won that third round i feel very very comfortable that i have a three to nothing lead heading into this third round and look at the strike output looking very very good we haven't went over 100 strikes in a round so that's why our stamina is very very good it's very very high just because we haven't been over committing too much so now here in the fourth round i expect him to pick up the spamming quite a bit i'm not gonna lie uh so we just gotta survive we just gotta survive these next two rounds because I know he's going to be coming out heavy trying to spam us. So he, he's on the pressure. He's no longer playing off the back foot. We heard him right there with a beautifully timed combination. So now we couldn't have we couldn't have asked for a better start in this fourth round. We got that rock. So now all we really need to do is survive. And if that third round was really close, uh, this we definitely got this fourth round in the bag as long as we don't get hurt. So now you see he's timing off these knees to the body. He's trying to circle off. We're going to the body with a clean body hook right there. We're trying not to let him hit our body too much. He's going to get off right there. Hits us with a clean body kick on the break. We try to go down to the body, but he clinched us up before we could. So now you see he's just applying the pressure. And now he's going with a lot more than just clinch spamming. He's trying to hit them elbows, hit them knees. Trying to combine all the levels of absolute cheesiness in fucking UFC 4. But it's all right. We knew it was coming. Trying to survive it. Clinches us up again. Puts us on the cage. But we're looking good so far. The body health has went down considerable. Like in a considerable amount just because of the attacks that he's went with to the body. The knees. As well as the clinch knees to the body. So here he's able to get backpack. We're going to immediately throw ourselves back down. This is where we feel comfortable. We're safe here. To be honest with you guys, we're real, real safe here. Um, I feel more comfortable on the ground at this point with him than I do on the feet. You just got to watch that rear naked choke. As long as we don't waste our stamina and we block the rear naked choke, we'll be fine. So we're just taking our time. He goes for the arm bar, but I'm not too worried about that. Just because this guy doesn't have very good sub offense. So we're able to get out of it. He's able to stay in position just because he didn't get too deep in the sub right there. Able to gain backside position right here. He goes for back. Goes for the back. He's able to get the rear naked choke from right here. But we do have really low. We do have really high stamina. So we're not really worried about it too much. And he lets it go. He tries to go for back flat. But we're not giving that up. But like I said, we're pretty safe right here. I'm not going to lie. I feel very comfortable with being right here. He's trying to go for back flat. But we're denying that thing. Just staying patient, not over committing, blocking the back flat every single time. If he wants to go for the rear naked choke, we'll let him have that just because I know I'm going to be able to get out of it. And if you have very good sub defense against guys like this, it's okay. It is okay to be comfortable with being in this position as long as you feel like you have a lead. Now look, our stamina bar is or our bar is filling up on this escape pretty pretty fast, so we're going to be all right. We're going to be able to, to regain top position as the round ends right there. We survived the fourth round. We we're able to actually get a rock in early enough in that round to where I feel like we won that round. So heading into this fifth round, I feel like all hell is about to break loose <laughs> with this guy because I know he's feeling it. And I know he's irritated because he's starting to knee and elbow spam. And that's how you know that you broke, that you broke a spammer is they start doing things that are very uncharacteristic. So there he's able to clinch us up. We're going to try to be aware of how many shots we're eating to the body. Just because we don't want to get body rocked. So you see he's going with knees. There's another elbow. He clinches us up. Body knees right there. Pushes us up to the cage. We're going to be able to get off right there. We try to go with the uppercut. But there's that body rock that he was looking for. And that's what we were trying so hard not to let happen. There's a spinning elbow. Clinches us up. When a little bit of danger right here, I'm not going to lie. A little bit of danger. Block the body kick. Go with the nice uppercut. Stun him right there. 
He clinches us up, but we're still taking our time, not rushing anything. Clinches us up again right there. So now we're just trying to survive, ladies and gentlemen, just surviving. This is what you need to do in these fourth and fifth rounds against these spammers, man. So we're just jabbing away at his block, breaking that block down with a nice combination. He clinches us up, but we immediately get out. Trying to circle off, but he's applying a crap ton of pressure now. Getting, getting us up against the cage, taking our back, punching us just because he knows that I'm trying to get off the cage. So we're trying to circle off. He's taking our back. He's going to go for the backpack, but we deny that thing right there. We know a body kick might be coming, and there it is. We clinch him up, go for a judo throw right there, and we're able to get into side control and buy ourselves a little bit of time, especially on that block right there, on that denial right there of the backside transition. And now we're just ticking that clock away. Like in Madden. For those of y'all that play Madden, when you go, you know, when you got a lead and you go uh, chew clock, you know what I'm saying, to try to get that dub, that's what we're doing right here. We're just trying to chew the clock. So we're just taking our time. He's able to regain his half guard right there. We're punching to gain that GA. Now we do have full GA, especially after deni that denial of full guard. We're going to go for top mount, but he was pre-denying it. Able to hit that sweep, and now, we now we're in trouble. Now we are in trouble because we're stuck in an arm triangle with low stamina. We're trying to get out. The bars are very, very close. We're trying not to blow this 4-1-3-1 lead that we do have. Just trying to take our time. And it looks like we are going to be able to get out of it here. We just got to make sure and mix it up just a little bit better. And we are going to be able to get out. But he is going to be in side control. So we got to watch out for a crucifix. Tries to go for top mount, but we deny that thing. And with 35 seconds left, we will go to our back right there. He's going to punch our body. So we immediately go back to half guard. Just got to watch for the arm triangle again. But he decides to posture up. Trying to rain down that heavy ground and pound. And we're able to get back to our feet right there. And with 10 seconds left, we're just coasting the victory right here. Not going to eat anything too heavy. Catch him with a beautiful time overhand off that missed spinning elbow. And that's going to be the end of the fifth round. I honestly feel like I won this decision. But, you know, EA does some really, really fluky and fugazi shit sometimes. So hopefully it doesn't screw me out of this decision win against this Robert Whitaker. I'm not going to lie. So let's go ahead and see if we did get the dub here with Israel Adesanya. It's always, I always get nervous, man. I always get nervous when it comes down to a decision. I'm not going to lie. But we do get the dub with the 49-46 decision win over this clinch spamming ass Robert Whitaker. But that's it for the video, guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. I do post UFC 4 content channel or UFC 4 content to this channel daily if you are new to the channel. And thank you guys for all stopping by. Make sure you guys have a good day, a good afternoon, a good evening, depending on where you guys are watching this from. And I will see you guys in the next video.